Dave Palumbo here with another installment of Guru Talk. Today it's just me, but I have a very important topic to discuss with you. How do you know your anabolics are real? There's a couple of ways you can tell. And, you know, I have four specific ways to tell how your anabolics are real. And I'm going to give you these steps and all the different ways you can go about doing it. And you probably should use a combination of all, all of these ways if you really want to be absolutely sure. But there are four ways to determine if your anabolics are indeed real. And one of the obvious ways, I guess number one we'll start with, is how do I look and feel? And you know what? In recent years, because most of the gear, most of the anabolic steroids and GH, are being produced by underground labs, meaning that there's really no real companies out there, like back in the day when Steris used to make things, or Upjohn, and uh, you're not going to pharmacies and buying real anabolics anymore. What's happening is that there are different individuals, and I don't know, maybe some people have put together companies to do this, but mostly it's individuals who are purchasing raw materials, most likely from China, importing them into the United States or wherever they're making the stuff. Uh, they're then using you know, very obvious and very available processes that you can find on YouTube or anywhere of how to make your own anabolics, taking the powder, combining it okay, in uh, some sort of a liquid medium. Usually it's an oil that they're dissolving it in. They're filtering it through a filter syringe to get at the impurities and then they're putting some kind of like uh, antibacterial compound in there. And they're then bottling it in 10 cc bottles most likely and, and then they're selling it to you. They're putting their own names on it and everything like that. Now the question is what are they putting in there? Are they purposely mislabeling stuff? Are they putting cheap stuff in there because they can make more money or are they putting stuff in there that Quite frankly, they're not really sure what it is because they're buying it from China and they're assuming that whatever the Chinese are labeling it as is real. Or, you know, is the stuff really good? And, you know, that's a tough question because there's no quality control really going on in, in, in making this stuff. Some people have, you know, the idea that, hey, I'm going to put out some really good stuff, quality ingredients. People will buy my stuff and I'll make a lot of money. And then, uh, and then what happens is, they get greedy, you know, a year or two passes and they start watering the stuff down, they start maybe using cheaper ingredients, etc., etc. But how could you tell if your gear is real? That's the question. Well, how do you look in the mirror? How do you feel on the, on the stuff? That's the first, the first step. I have to call people up a lot of times who are clients of mine and I have to say to them, and it's a very uncomfortable conversation once in a while we have to have, um, what do you think about your gear? Do you think it's real? And usually when I say that to people, because I don't have to make that phone call very often, usually they're like, you know, I, was, I, j I had a feeling this stuff wasn't good. I'm really not feeling it. I, you know, I don't really have a heightened sex drive. And, and usually what I see is I just don't see the, that, that pump on them. I don't see that veiny, vascular, you know, steroided <laughs> look, quite frankly. Uh, it's more of a natural look. And a lot of times people have good genetics and, and, they, and they'll lose weight on a diet. You know, when I'm dieting them down, they just, they lose that unnatural look. Now, that's not always a great way to determine because everyone has different genetics. So sometimes, you know, you just can't tell. And sometimes people just don't have a lot of muscle development yet. So they, you can't tell. I could tell on people who are well-developed who have a lot of mass on them. And then they take something that's not real. And I'm like, these people don't look like they're on, on a cycle. But, you know, that's more anecdote. That's more like, all right, well, I'm kind of guessing at that point. We don't want to be guessing. What's a better way? Well, you know, when I was coming up in the 90s, they had just made anabolic steroids controlled substances. It was called the Controlled Substance Act of 1990. Made all anabolic steroids controlled substances. And so all the companies that were so easy to get access to and get anabolics from pretty much dried up because they couldn't start, they couldn't sell it the way they were before because everything required, especially in New York State, a triplicate prescription. The DEA was tracking everything now. And so a lot of, there were people who came out with counterfeits. Counterfeits were a big thing back in the 90s. What counterfeits were, were they weren't underground labs because no one had access to doing that stuff back then. 
They were actually people who were bottling and trying to mimic what was actually out there. So if there was Winstrel V from the veterinary you know, pharmacy uh, that was a 30cc bottle, they would try to absolutely duplicate that, but there would be no Winstrel in there. Matter of fact, in some cases, they were putting really bad compounds like Armorol because in, 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 it looked like Winstrel. More than likely, it was probably chalk most of the time, you know, chalk dust in there. And, uh, you know, you had to be like a, like a scientist or a, uh, you had to be like Sherlock Holmes. And what we would find is that the pamphlets that would, they would put in with the, with, the, with the Winstrel V or whatever compound we were trying to look at were not made of the same paper. They were too thick, whereas the, the ones that came from the pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical companies were more tissue paper-like. Maybe the, the labels were rounded when they should have been pointy. There were just little subtleties that you can find. The expiration date was never stamped on the bottle. They were printed on the bottle at, with the same print that the bottle labels were printed with. And we would have to be like, like almost like, like I said, look for clues. Another thing we did back then was we actually tasted the drugs back then, which I'm surprised no one does these days. Like testipionate would have a very bitter taste and it would numb your tongue. Uh, whereas testinanthate wouldn't. Testinanthate doesn't do that to your tongue. Uh, cypionate and propionate both do have that numbing uh, taste. Um, if you would chew an Anadrol tab or a Dianabol tab, they would be bitter, bitter, and numb your tongue. Whereas if you chewed a, a tablet and it almost had like a sugary taste to it, you would know that was a fake. Uh, so even Anavar has like a bitter taste to it as well. Uh, so sometimes you can, we can, you can figure things out that way. Um, I remember we also... Um, uh, Prima Bowen, I believe, had no taste, whereas Winstrel, even in the injectable form, would, would be very bitter to the tongue, and it would like almost numb the end of your tongue. So that was a way. So we had to use every little you know, clue that we had at our disposal. Taste test, inspecting the labels and the bottles and the pamphlets that came in there, and that's how we determined. But nowadays, there's, 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 we have more technology. Um, Another, a third way that people can detect whether what they're taking, at least from, from a testosterone and growth hormone perspective, would be to go for blood work. So you can go for blood tests and you can test your total testosterone. If your total testosterone, if you're on 1,000 milligrams of testosterone a week and you go and get tested and your total testosterone comes back at 250 or 300, okay, when it probably should be you know, 2,000 or 3,000 at, at that level, you know what you're taking is probably not good and probably underdosed or, or probably not dosed with anything. If you come back maybe six, seven, eight hundred, you might say, well, you know what, I might be taking something that's real, but it's obviously underdosed. Uh, same thing with growth hormone, and this is a little harder. Usually guys wait, will take a shot of growth hormone three hours before giving blood work. They'll test their IGF-1 levels because we know the growth hormone, when you inject it, tells the liver to release IGF-1. And if your IGF-1 is high, theoretically, the growth hormone is working. It's, it, you know, Another way to really detect with GH would be if your hands get numb at night. A lot of, a lot of times that happens when people sleep at night, they get numb hands. Uh, sometimes we used to, back in the day, we used to take a big shot of GH. So instead of doing like our usual two to three or four IUs a day, we would take like 10 IUs for one shot and just, and, and not eat and see if our blood sugar dropped. Because if you take a big shot of GH, that causes a big release of IGF-1. It should drop your blood sugar. And once again, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Nowadays, we have what's called a ROID test. Uh, it was produced by Bill Llewellyn. He manufactures these. I sell them on my DavePalumbo.com website. I'm probably the biggest retailer of them out there. Um, because I, when I saw that, that he came out with this test a couple years ago, I said, Bill, this is going to change the scope. You saved bodybuilding, essentially, because now with all the underground labs, and you, you, you don't know what's real and what's not, you can test everything. So the Roy test kits, which I sell at DavePalumbo.com, you can test every single anabolic steroid known to man that are made pharmaceutically speaking. Anavar, Prima Bone, you know, Winstrel, Testosterones. We even have a growth hormone testing kit and we have a clenbuterol testing kit. And the clenbuterol testing kit will actually tell you what the strength of the clenbuterol is. There are also testing kits that will tell you if you have testosterone or not, and then you can buy another tester that tests what we call the quantification of the, of, the, um, of the testosterone. How much is in there, in other words. And those are called the semi-quantitative tests, and you can tell how much testosterone in anthate or cypionate. There's one for that. There's one for DECA, DECA-durabilin. You can test that, and trenbolone and anthate. So we have th uh, three testers 
for those four compounds to tell you how much of that compound is actually in there. It'll give you actually milligramage amounts, which is really, really pretty cool. And I think the future is going to be really bright for even more testing kits. The GH tester is great. It's like a pregnancy test. You literally dip a stick into the GH for, uh, and it'll tell you, yes, it's real or no, it's not. Now, it doesn't tell you the strength of the growth hormone, but it will tell you if what you're dealing with is real or fake. The problem is that, you know, I've sold a lot of these kits, probably a couple thousand over the last couple of years, and probably 50% of the GH, at least that people come back to me and ask me what the results mean or if, you know, show me their results, probably 50% of the GH out there is coming back as fake, meaning it's nothing in there. Uh, if, you get, if you get two lines fake, one line's real. So, unfortunately, there's a lot of fakes out there. But the advantage of having something like Roy test is that you, we can at least determine if what we're using is real. If I'm a woman and I'm using Anavar, I don't want to be taking Dianabol and not know about it. So if I test my Anavar and it comes back as Anavar, then I know it's good. Same thing with Primabol. Now, the only thing recent, in recent times, a lot of these um, uh, underground labs now are using different oils to suspend the uh, drugs in. And when you use the MCT oils, it seems like that kind of can uh, sometimes dilute down the Roy test results. Um, Roy test pretty much works this way. The, the D vial, this ABCD vial, the D vial pretty much is definitive for injectables. Um, take Primabol, for instance. If you get Primabol and D vial is the most definitive for that test. And a lot of people test their Primabol because, also known as methenolone and anthate, because those are, that's probably the most fake compound out there. Now, if your methenolone comes back as like a dark brownish purple, it's real primabol. You don't even have, you almost don't even need to do another test on it, another vial test on it. Usually each vial test is, each Roy test is two vials. So you, you do the D vial for an injectable and then an A or B usually. And the D vial will tell you if there's an injectable in there and then the A and B will differentiate what the different, you know, drugs are. Whether it's um, testipinate or testinanthate or testpropinate or equipoise or DECA uh, or uh, dromostunolone, which is Masteron the A and B vials will, will differentiate those. So those color changes on the A and B vials will, will do that. Um, the D vials pretty much for most injectables look pretty much the same, they're purple, you know. Uh, only Primabolin is a dark brown and that's, that's how you know that that's good. Now Anavar, the, the C vial, which is usually used for pills, okay, so most pill testers will use the C vial, the C vial is very definitive for Anavar. It was actually made for Anavar. So if your C vial comes back at the right color for Anavar, you got Anavar. Um, unfortunately, I, like I said, I've seen a lot of test results come back Anavar for Dianabol, and that's not good. So we have tools. Once again, how do I look? How do I feel? Blood work, right? Go for blood work to see if your testosterone levels are high enough. Look at, the, look at the stuff. Does it look right? I mean, we know that certain things look and taste a certain way. Taste your pills. Do they have any taste in them or do they taste like they're made of sugar? Okay, are you eating a sweet tart or are you, are you eating an Anavar pill or are you, you know, having a Winstrel pill or Dianabol or Anadrol for that matter? Um, and then, of course, the most accurate way nowadays is test the stuff with Roy test. You're spending a lot of money on growth hormone. You're spending a lot of money on anabolic steroids. These testers are like 19 bucks a piece. You go on DavePalumbo.com, you buy the tester, you test your compounds. At least you have peace of mind. That's the smartest thing to do. In this day and age, when you're putting something into your body that you're not sure what it is, at least test so that you know that the, at least you're putting the right drug into your body. Now, there's other variables that we can never control. Sterility, the strength of the compound, unless you know, use the semi-quantitative tests. But at least we can get to that point. The good thing is that most of the anabolics that I've seen on the market and from what people report to me who are my clients, most of it's sterile. And the reason why a lot of it's and most of it is sterile is because it's pretty easy to put antibacterial stuff uh, you know, into the, you know, whether it be benzyl alcohol or sodium benzobenzoate. It's easy to put some kind of sterility you know, um, or antibacterial into the bottles. So most people do that. The question is, are they putting the right drug in the bottle? So unfortunately, some people don't have any scruples. They just don't care. Uh, they'd rather you know, make more money than worry about whether Johnny B, who's competing at the Olympia, has 
you know, enough testosterone in his bottle, you know. Or, you know, Mary G, who's, you know, doing the Wellness Olympia, has got her Prima Bowl, correct? He doesn't care. He's like, I'll put some test propionate in there. And, uh, and she's still going to get good. Re- she's going to get great results. As a matter of fact, she's going to have a lot of side effects, you know. So as a woman, you have to test your, your drugs if, if you care about being a woman, okay. As a man, if you want to get results, you want to test your drugs to make sure you're not, number one, getting ripped off and you, everything you're getting is testosterone. Number two, everything you're taking is not fake because I've seen that too. Uh, when in opportunity arises, I always tell people if you can get drugs from a legitimate compounding pharmacy, some of these rejuvenation clinics that sell you know, testosterone, DECA, Anavar, stuff that is American-made drugs and you have access to it because some of these some of these uh, rejuvenation clinics are more liberal than others in the way they prescribe stuff. Even getting growth hormone, if you can get pharmaceutical GH, even if you use less of it because it's more expensive, that's a better option because at least you know it's real. So at the end of the day, my four ways of determining whether your anabolics are real or not, how do you look and feel? Inspection of, of what you're using. How does it look? How does it taste? Third, go, to blood, go for blood work. Test your testosterone levels. Test your estrogen levels. See what your levels on blood work of GH and IGF-1 are. And thirdly, the most accurate and probably the best way in this day and age is to use the Roy Test Kit system uh, made by Bill Llewellyn, available at daypalumba.com. Because at least if you test your drugs, you'll know what you're using is real or not. And, I, and I'm always open to helping people interpret results. People constantly are emailing me on a regular basis. And sometimes I have to call Bill's office and say, hey, Bill, what do you think about these results? Just the other day, I got um, someone tested some Remabone. Because, you know, Primabone uh, was sold or someone else, I guess, purchased the rights to, uh, to Primabone. But they couldn't use the name Primabone. So they took the P off and they just called it Remabol, and I think it's made in the Middle East, and this guy was testing a vial of it, which I had a feeling was going to come back legit because it looked like a legitimate vial to me. And he tested it, and, and the, uh, the B vial looked kind of weird color, but the D vial was right on. It was like this brownish purple, and I showed it to, to one of Bill's workers there, Tim, my friend Tim over there at Roy Test, and you know, he said the Primabolin compound is most definitively defined by that D vial. And if you get that dark brownish purple color, it's the only one that will turn, it's the only injectable that will turn the D vial a brownish purple. All the other ones turn it purple. So that was definitive, even though the B was off and didn't look like the, what the chart said, because once again, probably the drug was, was suspended in like an MCT oil as opposed to you know grapeseed or whatever else. Uh, is available out there. And, and that, that could change sometimes the B and, and, a, and A vials. Understand that that's a possibility. And like I said, if you're not sure of the interpretation of the results, feel free to email me, take pictures of the vials, you know, make sure I can see which, what, what vial it is and tell me what compound you're testing for. The good thing about Roy test is if it's not what you think it is, you can go to the color chart and see what it is. Because if it turns yellow and it's supposed to turn green, you can see what's supposed to be yellow, and then you'll find out what compound you actually have. Now, if nothing changes color, then what you have is fake. You have nothing. That means you have no drugs whatsoever. So it's a great system. Check it out at DavePalumbo.com. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Dave Palumbo with another installment of Guru Talk.